How do I even start this video? I mean, we've all eagerly been waiting for the newest Dendro character in Genshin. It just seems like the three Dendro characters we started off with just wasn't enough for our team building curiosities, and oh boy does Nahida deliver on that front. Nahida provides everything we want out of a game state where Dendro is just so popular. Decent Dendro application both on-field and off-field, elemental mastery buffs for your teammates, and situational buffs for each element type in your team that give Nahida different buffs depending on which element you pair her with. I'm not going to waste any time here as Nahida or Lesser Lord Kusanali has always been a highly anticipated character and a lot of you are dying to learn about her. As always, this Nahida build guide will cover her best artifacts and weapons to general playstyle and team compositions. Without further ado, let's get this guide rolling. Nahida's kit is loaded with effects and every little detail is important, so here's an organized rundown of what exactly Nahida has to offer. First up, we have her elemental skill. This is the most important part of Nahida's kit because this is where the majority of her damage and dendro application comes into play. Nahida can tap the skill to deal AoE dendro damage or hold the skill to enter an aiming mode and tag enemies to deal dendro damage. No matter if you tap or hold her elemental skill, any enemy's hit will be marked with what's known as a Seed of Skanta for 25 seconds. To get the Dendro triggers against these marked enemies, you have to create elemental reactions on these enemies or have these enemies get hit by Bloom, Hyperbloom, or Burgeon damage. If you do any one of these things, the marked enemy will take an instance of Dendro damage known as Tri Karma Purification. Tri Karma Purification will only occur every 2.5 seconds, so do not expect it to deal multiple ticks of damage in a blink of an eye. Two more things you need to know about Tri Karma Purification are as follows. When two or more enemies are near each other and both are marked by Nahida's skill, a tether will be created to link the enemies. This tether means that if you trigger Tri Karma Purification against one of the linked enemies, the other linked enemies will also take damage. The other thing is that Tri Karma Purification gets enhanced by Nahida's second ascension talent, which provides 0.1% bonus damage and 0.03% crit rate for each elemental mastery point that Nahida has beyond 200. So, this means that if you have 800 EM, this gives us 60% bonus damage and 18% crit rate on her elemental skill. Getting as close as you can to 1000 EM without actually going over the cap of 100 EM is the key to building Nahida, not just because of her second ascension talent, but also because of her burst and her first ascension talent, as you'll see when I explain her elemental burst. Overall, Nahida's skill is super easy to use and it's her bread and butter ability. Not only is this her main source of damage, but the marks on the enemies last much longer than the skill's cooldown, and it's her main source of off-field dendro application. Nahida's elemental burst creates what's known as the Shrine of Maya. Under this large area, Nahida will gain different buffs depending on the types of elements in the party. At a base level, if there's a pyro character in the party, the interval damage from Tri Karma Purification will gain even more damage bonus outside of her second ascension talent. If there's an Electro character in the party, the 2.5 second cooldown interval between each Tri Karma Purification hit will slightly decrease. If there's a Hydro character in the party, then the duration of the Shrine of Maya will increase. Having two Pyro, Electro, or Hydro characters in the party instead of just one will further increase the values of these buffs. Meanwhile, having Animo, Dendro, Geo, or Cryo characters will not have any effects for Nahida to benefit from. Although these buffs can be nice and cool to use, what's really enticing about the Shrine of Maya actually comes from Nahida's first Ascension talent. This Ascension talent will increase the active character's elemental mastery by 25% of the highest EM character on the team with the buff capped at 250 elemental mastery. The character with the highest elemental mastery on the team is going to be Nahida 99% of the time. Not only will Nahida's EM build buff our teammates that are fighting within the Shrine of Maya, but we can also increase Nahida's own damage thanks to her second ascension talent that I explained earlier. In recent fashion to some of my other videos, here's the section for more advanced players curious about theory crafting concepts and in-depth Nahida mechanics. To ease you guys in, let's talk about energy which is a pretty simple concept to understand. So, Nahida's Tri Karma Purification can hit enemies every 2.5 seconds, but not every hit will actually generate Dendro energy. Nahida's energy generation interval is 3 particles every 8 seconds, which on paper looks pretty weird, but it's understandable once you visualize it. Most of the time, you won't be activating Tri Karma Purification hits right on the dot of 2.5 seconds, but rather with some delay due to the rate at which your characters can apply elements and trigger elemental reactions. 
So even with just fractions of a second added on between each 2.5 second interval, you'll most likely find yourself getting energy every third tick of Nahida's elemental skill. Nahida's Shrine of Maya lasts for 15 seconds with a 13.5 second cooldown and a 50 energy cost. If her burst cost any more than 50 energy, we might have had some energy issues, but luckily, not only is her burst cheap, but the duration also outlasts the cooldown. This low energy cost allows Nahida to comfortably focus EM and crit stats without worrying too much about energy recharge. She can use as little as 110 energy recharge in double dendro teams, while as a solo dendro character, anywhere between 140-150% to energy recharge is a good benchmark to start aiming for. Quickly covering her internal cooldowns, Kusanali is quite the interesting character. Her normal attacks will have the standard ICD of the 3 hit roll, so her first attack and fourth attack will apply Dendro. Nothing out of the ordinary here. Her elemental skills Tricarma Purification procs have no ICD and apply Dendro every time they tick. Remember that the hit interval is 2.5 seconds, so that effectively gives Nahida the standard ICD on her skill. The reason why no ICD is important even with the skill interval being 2.5 seconds is because of the Shrine of Maya buff with Electro characters. With one Electro character active in the party, Nahida's Tri-Karma Purification can theoretically hit every 2.25 seconds under the Shrine of Maya. This number is from talent level 1 and the interval will further decrease every time you level up her burst talent. Since her skill's ICD is not limited to every 2.5 seconds, this means that when we reduce the trigger interval of Nahida's skill with Electro characters, under perfect circumstances, Nahida's Dendro application also speeds up. However, we know that most often you're not under perfect circumstances and you will not hit that interval right on the dot every single time. The more important benefit for having no ICD coded into the game on her elemental skill is that so no matter what, Nahida will apply Dendro onto the enemy with every tick of Tri-Karma Purification. If a 2.5 second ICD was coded into the game, it could have completely ruined Nahida's Dendro application in Electro teams where an interval can drop below 2.5 seconds. In retrospect, Nahida's off-field Dendro application is similar to what we have right now except with a lot more uptime and a lot more leeway. Dendro MC needs a lot of energy to keep his elemental burst up, while Kole has a short duration on her burst that's a little more suitable for quick swap teams rather than longer rotations. Kusanali is better in the sense that her elemental skill marks for up to 25 seconds, which accommodates for pretty much all team rotations in the game. Even for a character like Sino, who spends up to 18 seconds on the field alone, Kusanali will have no problem supporting him with Quicken and Aggravate off-field. And as a Catalyst user, Nahida's on-field capabilities are already much better than what we currently have right now. Even with just standard Catalyst internal cooldowns on normal and charge attacks, those extra applications of Dendro can make all the difference in Bloom teams that need to pump out as many Dendro cores as possible. So we talked about Nahida's bread and butter mechanics, but now it's time for the meat and potatoes. If you're still learning English and don't understand idioms, what I'm basically saying here is this is the part you've been waiting for. Artifacts and Weapons Starting off with Nahida's best artifact sets, we have the 4-set Deepwood Memories. This is the set that you should always default to when it comes to building Nahida. The only scenario where you don't use this set on Nahida is if you have a dedicated Nahida team that already has a different character holding the 4-set Deepwood. For example, this could be a Bloom team where you're running Double Dendro and your Dendro MC already has the 4-set Deepwood equipped. Okay, then you're probably asking, if not the 4-set Deepwood Memories, then what else should I use on Nahida? Well, Nahida's best option aside from the 4-set Deepwood is the 4-set Gilded Dreams. Given that Nahida wants to get as close as possible to 1000 EM to cap out her Ascension talents, Gilded Dreams is the easiest way to do so. Beginners can use the 4-star artifact set 4-piece Instructor as a nice EM stat stick for not just Nahida but also her team. As for Nahida's artifact stats, this is where things get a little more complicated. Your optimal stats will change depending on whether you mainly use Nahida off-field or on-field, but regardless, I want you guys to know that when in doubt, shoot for 1000 EM as a first priority. If you follow this rule, you'll be A-OK -okay and your Nahida build will look good. However, if you're strictly looking to optimize then for a supportive off-field Nahida, you're going to want triple EM in the Sands Goblet and Circlet, with the Circlet replacement being crit rate or crit damage. As I mentioned before, the goal is to get as close as possible to 1000 EM with an off-field Nahida, but not to go over that number. Ultimately, that's up to you to look at your account and move around artifacts to meet that goal. 
replace the EM circlet with a crit circlet, not only to synergize with her second ascension talent, but also if you are going over 1000 EM because overcapping will definitely reduce your stat efficiency. An on-field DPS Nahida will use EM in the sands, dendro damage bonus in the goblet, and crit rate or crit damage in the circlet. A lot of our damage with this playstyle is going to be raw damage from attacks and spread reactions, which benefit more from dendro damage and crit stats than EM stats. The only exception to this is a Nilo Bloom team with an on-field Nahida, where the majority of your damage is going to be coming from Blooms, so there you can still go the triple EM build that I discussed just about 30 seconds ago. No matter which build you choose, substat focus remains the same. Prioritize crit stats and elemental mastery, then energy recharge and attack. Attack is nice but not as important on Nahida because her elemental skills base multiplier also scales off elemental mastery, not just attack. Unfortunately, weapons suffer from the same complications that Nahida's artifact stats suffer from. Depending on whether or not you want Nahida to be off-field or on-field, your weapon options can change drastically. The following ranking will be a listing for overall viability and general damage output, but I'll do my best to include which playstyle each weapon is best suited for since it's impossible to make a list that encompasses 100% of the facts when it comes to Nahida's weapons. Starting off with Nahida's top two options, her signature weapon, A Thousand Floating Dreams, is your best option, while Kagura's Verity is a somewhat close second. A Thousand Floating Dreams is the biggest EM stat stick we have and can also give damage bonuses to Nuhita, plus a small EM buff for the rest of the party with the passive. Kagura's Verity synergizes extremely well with Nahida's second ascension talent, giving her elemental skill a ton of crit damage and even more damage bonuses to work with. Both of these weapons are the top two weapons for Nahida no matter which playstyle you want her to fulfill. After these top two options, the most consistent catalysts you have are Wandering Evanstar and Sacrificial Fragments. Neither weapon really needs refinements, so if you're not a big spender, there's no need to chase refinements for these weapons. Both are mainly used for the Elemental Mastery stat and are good for all types of Nahida playstyles. If you're looking for free-to-play weapons that provide EM, look no further than Magic Guide and Mappa Mare. Magic Guide is a 3-star catalyst that has volatile highs and lows, but its highs are actually extremely surprising for a 3-star weapon. The passive is like Dragon's Bane or Rain Slasher where your damage is increased against enemies affected by Hydro or Electro. This is really valuable in teams like Bloom with triple Hydro characters and Nahida as an on-field driver. Mappa Mare is more consistent but requires R3, R4, or R5 to start competing with some of the other 4-star weapons. It's up to you to decide whether or not you want to make that investment, but just know that R1 Mappa Mare is consistent but not going to have the highest highs. And last but not least, if you have Solar Pearl or the Witsit, then you're in good hands. The two of these weapons have crit stats which complement both the spread reaction and Nahida's second ascension talent. Solar Pearl excels when you're on-fielding Nahida because it gives her a big boost to not just her elemental skill damage but also her normal attack damage. Meanwhile, the Witsit can be used for both playstyles, just keep in mind that with the Witsit, a lot of your damage is going to be front-loaded in the first 12 seconds of Nahida taking the field since the weapon's passive cooldown is extremely long. You heard me mention a few different Nahida playstyles throughout this video, so now it's time to give you some of the team setups for Nahida. There's a lot of teams that I can't even cover in this video because it's already getting really long, so I'm going to keep things quick when it comes to the most important teams. But rambling aside, let's kick things off with Nahida in a Nilo Bloom team. Like I described in my Nilo guide, the Bloom team can have either double Hydro or triple Hydro. Generally, the composition will have Nahida, Nilo, Barbara or Kokomi, and a flex character. This flex character can be a Dendro unit with Dendro MC or Kole, or it can also be a third Hydro character with Xingqiu or Yalan. For the double Hydro, double Dendro setup, Nahida doesn't have to be on the field, but for the triple Hydro setup, Nahida is going to be your on-field driver. And unless you're really good at avoiding enemy hits, you're going to take a lot of damage from not just Bloom reactions, but also enemies. So, one thing that you might actually need to do in a triple Hydro setup is run both Barbara and Kokomi together. This makes the team extremely expensive with three 5 stars, Nilo, Nahida, and Kokomi. So, running Xingqiu and Barbara together with Nahida and Nilo is the cheapest alternative. Although Xingqiu's Rain Swords cannot block damage from Bloom reactions, he can at least provide resistance to interruption and reduce damage from enemies. Given that Nahida has standard levels of off-field dendro application, she doesn't just have to fit in with Nilo when it comes to Bloom teams. We can also pair her with the ever-so-popular 4-stars Kukishinobu and Toma for Hyper Bloom and Burgeon respectively. 
The team generally looks like Nahida, Shinobu or Toma, Shinchu or Yulan, and a flex character. The last slot is extremely flexible for both teams. You can run a second Hydro character like Kokomi, Barbara, Ayato, or Child to have a second character with Hydro attacks to drive the team. There's also no harm in bringing an Animo character for swirls and grouping enemies, or a Dendro character for the Dendro Resonance. The only catch here is that for Virgin teams, you do not want to pair Toma with a second Pyro character that applies a lot of Pyro like Shangling. This is because it creates way too many unwanted burning reactions and ultimately interrupts our Virgin. But for Hyper Bloom teams, you can still run a second Electro character like Fischl or Beto for a mix of Quicken Spread and Aggravate reactions alongside Hyper Bloom. Next, we have Nahida with Sino. As I mentioned before, the other off-field Dendro options we had before Nahida simply didn't have long enough bursts to support Sino's lucrative 18 seconds of burst uptime. However, Nahida can buff Sino's EM by up to 250, and the Seed of Skanda lasts for 25 seconds, making her the best Dendro support for Sino. The team setup is really simple. You want Nahida, Sino, a second Electro character, and a flex slot. If your second Electro character is an offensive character like Fischl or Beto, then your flex slot needs to have survivability. Barbara and Kokomi work for support builds and a few extra Hyper Bloom reactions, while standard picks like Zhongli for shielding also work. However, if your second Electro character is Dori or Kukishinobu, you can add another damage support to the team. Although all of the damage supports don't have buffs that last for Sino's entire rotation, these standard options are usually Kazuha or Sucrose, or Dendro MC or Kale for the Dendro Resonance. The fourth team is very similar to Sino's team, except now Nahida becomes the Hyper Carry. I know some of you just want to see Nahida deal the biggest numbers that she can, so this team surrounds Nahida with as many supports as possible to give her the highest damage numbers. Since we're dealing with Dendro, which can't be swirled by Kazuha or Sucrose, we're going to want to utilize the Dendro Resonance for extra elemental mastery. Thus, the team consists of Nahida, Dendro MC or Kole, an off-field Electro character, and Zhang Li. The off-field Electro character is most often Fischl, but there are many options available. Yai Miko, Raiden, Beidou, and Kuki round out the top 5 most popular Electro characters to use for off-field application. And aside from that, the team is super straightforward and easy to control gameplay-wise. There's no need to balance reactions as delicately as a team like Virgin Toma needs to. If you don't have Zhang Li, it's hard to find replacements without sacrificing survivability. Sucrose can be run for elemental mastery buffs if you already have Shinobu for survivability, otherwise Barbara or Diona can be used as free-to-play friendly options. Diona provides nice shielding and an elemental mastery buff with C6, while Barbara can easily run the Forza Instructor to buff up Nahida further. Both of these characters have really infrequent applications of their respective elements, so they won't interrupt much of Nahida's reactions. And with that, let me know your thoughts on Nahida, whether it be your builds, teams, or general opinions down in the comments below. Good luck to everyone pulling for her, and other than that, that's all I have time for today. If you enjoyed this guide or thought it was useful, be sure to support both the video and the channel. You can follow me on places like Twitch or TikTok, or just sub to the YouTube channel, whatever people do nowadays. Other than that, it's the same as always. I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.